I've shown the survivability onion a few times in videos about the Bradley and in Substack articles about Iran's underground airfields. And the survivability onion is basically a map of how to survive an encounter with an adversary. And today, I want to talk to you about how you might use the survivability onion to understand how you can defend yourself in a vehicle or on foot. Now, if you're interested in using this in a class or some kind of hip pocket training, you can find the PowerPoint on my website or in the description below. Disclaimer, I did not invent this. This came out in a paper by Gary L. Guzzi called Vulnerability Risk Assessment. And you can find that in the pinned comments below as well. Now, when I first encountered the survivability onion back in 2004, I think I was at BNOC, which is now called ALC or Advanced Leaders Course. This is the course that you have to attend to become an Army Staff Sergeant. And this thing kind of looked like it did on the left. And over my career, it, it kept popping up in different forms. It even made its way into video games. But there are some issues with the survivability onion. It has gatekeeper language that's really intended more for scientists or policy professionals than low-level soldiers, NCOs, or civilians. So when I created the survivability onion for my Bradley video, I wanted to simplify it so that soldiers could cadence the use of the words don't be in order to remember the onion. Now I'm gonna break down the survivability onion, but first let me talk about this week's sponsor. I spend about eight hours a day sitting in front of a computer and then I come home and I sit in front of this computer to bring you guys content. I developed sciatica, basically a pain shooting down my left leg. My doctor asked to see my wallet and he said, you really need to get a thinner one. Old wallet, new wallet. Guess which wallet stopped the pain? Go to ridge.com slash Macbeth. You'll get 40% off until March 24th, and it could change your life like it did mine. Ridge has been in business for 10 years, and their wallets come in a multitude of colors and styles. I can put my wallet in my front pocket. And even though it's small, it still holds 12 cards and cash. Ridge also has this awesome key case so my keys don't jingle anymore when I go running. So go to ridge.com slash Macbeth and save yourself 40% until March 24th. Thanks for sticking with me. Now, as I go through the survivability onion, I want to emphasize this. Think in multiple spectrums or die. World War I only had one spectrum, visible light. Camouflage netting was sufficient. And visible light was just a small part of the electromagnetic spectrum. By World War II, radar came into play, which added new things to worry about on the spectrum. You also had radio, which allowed units to communicate, but it also gave away your position if the enemy was listening and allowed the enemy to pinpoint your location. Today, we have multiple spectrums to worry about. Your radio signal can still be intercepted and triangulated, but we also have infrared and thermals that can see through some types of concealment and are easily forgotten because they're not visible. We still have to worry about visible light, but ultraviolet sensors are coming into the market as well. And finally, you need to be thinking of the cyber spectrum. As Russia was preparing for the invasion of Ukraine, Ukrainian women were flirting with Russian men on Tinder, trying to find out news about the invasion. A soldier got his command post blown up after posting geotagged pictures on Facebook, and U.S. military bases were outlined from soldiers running with their fitness watches synced to Strava. Where do you run on a military base? You run the road lining the perimeter. So, you might think you're safe in one spectrum until one day you aren't especially the cyber spectrum. It takes a lot of discipline to maintain security in the cyber realm since everything is online. So while we're going through the survivability onion, always think in multiple spectrums or you will die. Now, one big difference between my survivability onion and many others are the first layer of don't be there. I am a huge fan of don't be there because if this condition is met, nothing else your adversary does really matters. At the strategic level, it means always stay mobile. Always keep your adversary guessing as to where you are or where you're going to be. At the tactical level, it means noise, light, and litter discipline. Keep your electronic signature as low as possible, thinking in multiple spectrums. Remember what I said about the cyber spectrum. Don't be there is part of the tactical cyber spectrum and includes things like fitness trackers and Facebook posts. Don't be detected. So when people think of don't be detected, they think of camouflage, camo nets, or covering a tank with branches. But it's more than that. It's signature and sensor management. 
Keep radio traffic to a minimum. Use wire-based or runner-based communications in between vehicles if practical. You can have the greatest camouflage in the world, but your radio will give you away. And remember that active sensors can be detected further than they can see. During Operation Desert Storm, Iraqi tanks tried to fight coalition tanks at night using IR spotlights. U.S. tanks would just hang back at a searchlight range and aim at the big IR spotlight beacon and destroy Iraqi tanks from a safe distance. Don't be acquired or identified. This really should be two different layers, but they're both similar enough that they can be combined into one because one logically comes from the other. But the difference is that just because you are acquired doesn't mean that you're instantly identified. Think of it like seeing a stranger while walking at night. Okay, you've acquired the target, but is the target a threat or is it just a guy out for a walk? So getting acquired is bad, but getting identified as a threat is worse. But there's a few things you can do to mitigate this. The first is recon. Know where your adversary is and their composition, disposition, and most likely course of action. If you know that, you can alter your posture to avoid being acquired. If you're halted, put out two-man observation and listening posts to spot the enemy before they spot you. If you spot them first, you can decide to displace or engage. You have the advantage. If the adversary has drones, you might want to change your behavior in ways that you wouldn't if you knew they didn't have drones. Now, if you are acquired but not identified, you can use this as a survival strategy. Visual or thermal modification of your vehicle can help prevent identification. Even something as simple as removing your guns from the vehicle when you're in the rear. Your vehicle might look less likely to be attacked the less critical it looks, which would make a better target for a drone-delivered munition. A truck with stuff in it or a truck without stuff in it. If you have the tarp on, you can't tell if there's stuff in it, so taking a few minutes to take the tarps off could save your life and prevent you from getting attacked as the bad guy looks for a juicier target. So if you're following the first three layers of the onion, you stand a pretty good chance of staying alive. Don't be hit. Now, once we move through this to don't be hit, it means that you are now in active combat and you have to worry about the kinetic effects of the enemy. So to start with don't be hit, maneuver. Don't stay still. If you stay still, you die. If you're walking through the woods, always be thinking of the nearest cover you can run to when you hit contact. You should do this until it is automatic. If you're in vehicles, always think of where you're going to fall back to if you break contact. Where is the most defensible point where you can consolidate, reorganize, and come up with a plan? Suppress. Put a wall of steel on that bad guy to stop him from sticking his head up and shooting at you. Naturally, you are going to have to do more than one of these things. So eventually, you'll either need to obscure, pop smoke, break contact, or two, assault the adversary. Do one of these things. The sure way of getting killed is to do nothing. Now, Active protection systems for vehicles show some promise. There are systems which will destroy incoming enemy rockets and may even possibly degrade the effectiveness of main gun rounds one day. These systems are still in their infancy, but Israel has used the trophy system, the trophy active protection system, for a little over 10 years now, and it seems to be working against missiles fired from Palestinian forces. So if your vehicle is equipped with this system, maintain it. But let's say you are hit. Don't be penetrated. Okay, remember the movie Black Hawk Down where the ranger takes out his rear plate and says, I don't plan on getting shot in the back running away? Well, if plan A is not to get shot in the gunfight, you really need a plan B. So keep your plates in, wear your helmet. For vehicles, there's not much you can do outside of engineering something. Everybody made fun of Russia's cope cages, but we built a few ourselves back in 2003. Don't be killed. I gotta be honest with you. If you're at this point, you're gonna have a lot of problems and your life or death depends on how well you've trained or just random luck. And sometimes it's just not your day. But there are some things you can do to even your odds. Number one, take rollover training seriously and wear your seatbelt, even in combat. Rolling over is the number one cause of preventable fatalities during training. And I guarantee you that if you get hit with a catastrophic kill, you may survive, but your vehicle's gonna go out of control. So wear your seatbelt even if you move your vehicle a millimeter. Two, inspect your kit for snags. When I was in Iraq, I would roll out with only three magazines, a seatbelt cutter right here, my first aid kit, and an admin pouch for like my glasses and my gloves. So if you're primarily in a vehicle, 
Think of how you can reduce the amount of pouches so you lessen the chance of snagging on something in an emergency. Practice getting out with full kit a few times so you can do it in the dark and by memory. Number three, if you're dismounted, make sure you can reach your first aid kit or your tourniquet with either hand. I've seen people keep it on the strong side that's fine in training, but train as you fight. And that's how the Survivability Onion works. Hey, if you like the channel, head on over to Bunker Brandy and get an awesome Live Laugh Launch t-shirt. It all goes to support the channel. And if you don't wear t-shirts and you want to support the channel, head on over to Substack and you can see uncensored footage and analysis, stuff I can't show on YouTube for like five bucks. And thank you so much for watching. It's me, Captain Bannon of the documentary Team Yankee. When I'm not kicking commie butts, I'm wearing t-shirts from Ryan Macbeth available at Bunker Branding. Knife Hands, High Mars, Landmines, Patriot, and even my favorite, the Tow Missile. Mushna, we want t-shirt too! Take a hike, commie! Ah! So come on down to Bunker Branding and take a stand for what's really important about America. Capitalism!